You know what was a pretty terrible movie about climate change? The Day After Tomorrow. Just Dennis Quaid as a scientist? It's not believable. In mid-June, the Washington Post reported that the White House had stepped in to block the planned congressional testimony of a State Department official who was previously a professor of chemistry and biochemistry at California Polytechnic State University at San Luis Obispo. Now, what was so explosive in this testimony that the White House had to put the kibosh on it, you ask? This, that human-caused climate change was possibly catastrophic to the planet, which isn't a hugely controversial position. Quote, there is broad consensus that the further and the faster the Earth system is pushed toward warming, the greater the risk of unanticipated changes and impacts, some of which are potentially large and irreversible, read the fourth national climate assessment. So the debate isn't whether the Earth is warming, it is, or that said warming will continue to cause increasing and potentially catastrophic extremes in our weather, it will, but rather what we should do to combat the damage done and, and this is scary, whether it's already too late. Now that's the debate among people with even a passing familiarity with the overwhelming science on the issue, which unfortunately doesn't include the current president of the United States or many of the men and women he has appointed to deal with the changing climate. In fact, Donald Trump is, without exaggeration here, folks, one of the most prominent climate change deniers in the world, using his massive platform to draw attention to debunked facts and conspiracy theories aimed at trying to disprove the patently obvious real fact that we are in an ahistorical moment of global warming. Side note, here's a not so fun fact. The last five years from 2014 to 2018 are the five hottest years planet wide ever recorded since the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration started tracking them. The story of Donald Trump's climate change skepticism goes back years, long before he was president or even thought he might have a chance to become president. Quote, the concept of global warming was created by and for the Chinese in order to make U.S. manufacturing non-competitive. That's Donald Trump tweeting back in November 2012. Four years later, as Trump is in the midst of his own presidential bid, he tried to say he was joking back in 2012. Here's what he told Fox and Friends in 2016. Well, I think that climate change is just a very, very expensive form of tax. A lot of people are making a lot of money. I know much about climate change. I've received many environmental awards. And I often joke that this is done for the benefit of China. Obviously, I joke, but this is done for the benefit of China because China does not do anything to help climate change. It's uh, not obvious to me that Trump was joking back in 2012 from that. And a look at all the things he said between then and now suggests he wasn't joking. Not at all. In 2014, Trump tweeted this, quote, snowing in Texas and Louisiana, record-setting freezing temperatures throughout the country and beyond. Global warming is an expensive hoax. And quote, that year alone, 2014, he tweeted or retweeted more than 40 things that raised questions about the existence and reality of climate change. Quote, it's record cold all over the country and world. Where the hell is global warming? We need some fast. Trump tweeted the following year. Then later that year, in South Carolina, Trump said this. Obama's talking about all of this with the global warming and the, that. A lot of it's a hoax. It's a hoax. I mean, it's a money-making industry, okay? It's a hoax. A lot of it. Getting elected president didn't change Trump's views on climate change or his willingness to voice them loudly. Quote, brutal. An extended cold blast could shatter all records. Trump tweeted in November 2018, adding, whatever happened to global warming? End quote. And then this one in January 2019, quote, be careful and try staying in your house. Large parts of the country are suffering from tremendous amounts of snow and near record setting cold. Amazing how big this system is. Wouldn't be bad to have a little of that good old fashioned global warming right now. End quote. And it's not just Trump's rhetoric either. In June 2017, the president pulled the United States out of the Paris Climate Accord. It's an international effort to deal with the threats posed by the warming climate. Now, Trump at the time insisted the accords were overly onerous on the United States and that other countries, like for example China, were simply not keeping up their end of the bargain. I was elected to represent the citizens of Pittsburgh, not Paris.
During the 2016 campaign, Trump pledged to, quote, get rid of the Environmental Protection Agency in almost every form. And since being president, he has rolled back dozens of environmental regulations in just the first few years of his first term. Now, at the center of all of Trump's talk and his tweets about the climate is this fundamental misunderstanding. Simply because there is a cold snap in the United States at some point in a given year is not proof that global warming is a myth. What Trump is talking about is weather, the given conditions at any one place in time. Weather is not the same thing as climate, which looks at the long-term trends in terms of temperature and other factors. Weather is a data point. Climate is the average of all the data points. Side note, Trump isn't the only Republican politician to make this unfortunate conflation. Oklahoma Senator Jim Inhofe, a longtime skeptic of climate change himself, brought a snowball into the Senate in February 2015 and said this. In case we have forgotten, because we keep hearing that 2014 has been the warmest year on record, it's a snowball. And that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out, very unseasonal. For those of you who say this can all wait and that Trump's skepticism on the issue won't matter much in the long sweep of history, I'd like to point you to the findings of the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in 2014. And this line from that report in particular, quote, continued emission of greenhouse gases will cause further warming and long lasting changes in all components of the climate system, increasing the likelihood of severe, pervasive, and irreversible impacts. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.